Okay, so I am having my third ever um, YouTube live, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. I'm hoping that a few of you jump on that have watched me before. Uh, these are always kind of surprise, what am I going to be on uh, videos, and I am, let me see what I'm doing here. I am, there we are. I'm all set up and ready to paint with you guys tonight. Um, I am going to do some tulips and let's see. Hi, Karen. Hello. So I'm doing some tulips, some daisies, some pretty long leaf petals that I'm going to show you. Miss Belinda. Hi, honey. Um, I am great. It's great to see you guys. Um, We've been, I've been in painting like a crazy person, 150 folders that have heart wreaths on it. So, all right. Hey, Cindy. And so we are going to be creating a bouquet of pretty tulips. We've got Ashley and Robin. Hey, Robin, I'm finally going to do the tulips and daisies. Um, and we have hula, hula, hula. And we have uh, Brighton, Michigan, awesome gem. And uh, Shawnee, and I don't know everybody's name, but it's like, what is that? It's like um, the little kid show where you look in the mirror and you say hi to everybody. That's what I feel like when we're doing this. But it's nice, thank you, hello guys. Um, uh, so last time there was a lot of trolling, not nice things being said. So I was been shy about coming back on. So hopefully um, we will have nice people out there today. And if we don't, I have some friends that are going to try to hide them. And um, it's so good to see you too, Brenda. Thank you. I wish I could see your faces, um, but I see your hearts. So that's really nice. Um, so I was out doing yard work. So. <laughs> Um, that's okay. I'm going to put the camera down where we're painting. That's what's going to be important. I'm going on, I'm going to be on black paper tonight and, uh, boo to the trolls. Yeah. What the heck? I didn't even know what trolls were. <laughs> I said, I have seven children. They always had their friends at my house and I have 29 grandbabies and I have my handful of wonderful fun um, uh, trolls and gnomes are what we've been painting. So that's a good thing. Uh, and yeah, so I, I let them bother me cause I'm like, what the heck? I couldn't believe the bad stuff they were saying. And so I'm like, why, why are they saying that? Anyway, uh, my grandson said, the thing you're supposed to do me mom is you just act like they're not there. And then that will make them not get excited and not want to come on. But I realized that if they were causing me trouble and it was worrying me that they would post so that, I mean, they would subscribe so that it would let them know when I'm going to be on. So I'm going to stop talking about them right now. Okay. So let's see. Don't let the sour crabbies bug you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you being on. I have a great Facebook group of kind, loving uh, followers, and we're one stroke painters, and we have such a good time, and we're there for each other, and we help you. Um, y'all can help block them. I didn't know y'all could help block them. How cool is that? I didn't know that. So it's really nice to know that that uh, you guys can help. So because I want to concentrate on painting and not look up and see bad stuff. Is that a deal? Um, so on my Facebook group, we have a huge group. I started out with the Donna Dewberry face. I mean, Donna Dewberry's um, Facebook was my church friends and my kids and they're, they're my grandkids and and um, neighbors and stuff. And then all of a sudden my son said, mom, you're over 5,000. So they blocked you there. You can't have any more. And he said, I thought it, I said, he said, I thought it was going to be friends. And I said, well, well, my one strokers feel like they're my friends also. <laughs> so I couldn't say no to anybody. So anyway, now we have besides that site. So if you try to get on that site, many people try. And it's like, I don't let them come on. And so that's what makes me feel bad. It's not that I uh, won't let them come on. The thing that happens is that 
uh, it blocks it. And until somebody drops off, then I can add somebody new. So we started a Facebook group, which is called Donna Dewberries with an S, official one stroke group. And when you come to that one stroke group, we have so much fun showing paintings and and giving you critiquing and positive, positive, kind comments. So, um, and it's been really fun. We've had a couple thousand people join in the last two months. So it's been really good. And we're well over 25,000 now. So that's a good thing. And we have sales, product sales every um, Tuesday and Friday. And I just want you to know, if you're out there and you can't find my paint and can't find my brushes right now, because we even sold out on our site this week, we finally sold out, um, which is not a good thing, <laughs> but it will be like two weeks before everything comes back and we can get more stuff back in uh, because the warehouses have been closed, not us, but the warehouses. So what's going to happen? I just want you to know, you HSN, HSN shopping channel, hsn.com has some of my paints and they have my brushes and they're a crazy good deal and you can get a kit with lots of good stuff in it for a really good price so check that out yes miss melinda tangle thanks for joining me and elizabeth and connie and karen from tennessee and patsy all right so we have a wonderful group and we've got i don't know we've got a few people on now and so i've got some thumbs up i guess that's a good thing <laughs> and i'm gonna start painting does that sound good to you um i was gonna come on exactly at seven um but i'm a little bit before but i didn't tell anybody so this is so we got like 65 people that didn't even know I was going to be on. So that's a good thing, right? So more people are coming. That's a good thing from Arkansas. That's a good thing. How many times have I said that? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to paint and it'll be better than you looking at this coronavirus hair that has not been done. But I'm, um, thank you very much for coming and let's start painting. All right. I'm going to use this wonderful black pad that um, has a slick black uh, paper. Okay, so there we go. Is that upside down or is that right side? Yeah. Okay, it's reversed. I don't know what that means, but we will be okay. I'm going to set it up. Oh, yeah, that is better if it's the right side because <laughs> my hand's going to be doing crazy things. Okay. So... I'm sorry, guys. We took it off and put it back on today. Now, let me show you what I've got going here. I'm going to put my paper towel here. This is a slick black paper, all right? And I like to use a lot of scrapbooking paper. I think many of you have seen me do that before. So, see, I do it right on the scrapbooking paper, which is really nice, too. That's upside down. What the heck? This is right. Okay. All right, tell me to stop. Am I making you crazy? <laughs> All right, so there we are. Who's the first? Oh, my first live. Oh, Pat, hello. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do yellow tulips, some little red flowers, and some tall, pretty leaves. And by accident, I put licorice here. So this is what I'm using. I'm using multi-surface. Is that backwards? Yeah, it's reverse. I don't know why. This is multi-surface, folk art multi-surface paint, which goes onto all kinds of surfaces. All right. So that shows you glass, metal, indoor, outdoor. It's got a sealer in it, so it makes it even better. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a deep breath. Hi, Miss Donna. Thank you, Michelle. All right. So it's not reverse. It is. That doesn't say multi-surface. It's backwards. Right there. It's reverse. And this is on the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and paint. I tried it upside down. That didn't work. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to paint. Is that a deal? All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to put some green. I've got a three-quarter inch brush. I dampened the brush. I laid it on the paper towel because we don't want water in here. 
And I'm going to go back and forth to load this brush. I just want a little bit of green. I shouldn't have put all of this on one palette probably. So I put the medium over here. So I'm going to touch the floating medium. Now, let me show you what that is. All right, you want that at least two thirds up your brush. Floating medium, here's big bottles. Floating medium is the fluff that's inside paint with no med with no water. No, hello. It's the fluff that's inside paint with no pigment in it. Am I confusing? Why is it only reverse for me? It's not reverse for you, that's weird. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a couple of tulips, but I'm going to start down here and I'm going to be up on the chisel. There's the chisel edge. And so I'm, I'm going to, whatever follows is the, pro, the predominant color. So I'm going to come up, pressure, up, pressure. Okay. So then I'm going to pick up some more and I'm going to put pressure and stand. Now look, that dark green isn't showing. So I have a fix for that. Okay. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to work some citrus green and this is citrus green and sap green. So I'm going to work it in so it's not just all dark green. Okay because that'll show better. I'm sorry, the phone I thought was turned off. There we go. All right. So now see how much better that shows. So that's the sap. And I just needed to mix it a little bit more. Do you see that? So we're double loading. We're pushing down. And we're standing up. Okay. Now there's another way. I should probably do it later, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. So I got a little bit more mediums because I'm on paper. All right. And I'm going to come up and paper makes it dry. And I'm going to push down and scoop over. All right. So chisel up and over and stop. Now see this color is what's on top. So the citrus, the lighter green. So I'm going to turn my brush so that whatever color is on top follows. So it's going to be the citrus. And then I'm going to come up and over and drop that brush down. And look what happens. See how you can see? Let me get out of the glare. See, the dark is under there. Then the dark would be on that side. So it looks like you did this fancy stroke. All right. So I am going to put some fern up there maybe and a little bit of fern here and then what's going to happen guys is that we're going to put the tulip stems afterwards but i just wanted some background in there before we got started and then i'm going to pick up another brush another three quarter okay all right so these are my signature brushes they're purple and white okay now what i want you to see is I'm going to pick up, I don't know why that white was on the plate and I didn't see it. I'm going to pick up a third of the yellow ochre. This is a three quarter inch flat. I'm doing one corner as I'm dipping here, which I want two thirds push really hard. This is what you do if you don't use a double loader. And if you check out my double loaders on YouTube, you'll see that they help you if you are getting muddy. But if you follow me, you won't be muddy. See, I'm loading that brush two thirds full. All right. And okay, so now let's let's do a tulip first. All right. So before I go to do the tulip, let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to come here and get a little bit of white on one corner. Okay. So I'm going to come up here. And then I'm going to slide back down. All right, so let's go a little bit closer and let me show you what I'm doing. Oops, I got a glare. I want you to be able to see that color really good. Oops. All right, so as I come here, 
I'm laying the brush flat down. Then, is that clear for you guys? I have so many that are telling me that they like this better than Facebook when I'm doing this painting on Facebook. So, um, what do we have out there? Thank you. Um, North Carolina is here. Hello. And, oh, yes, lefties do my technique, but then this is what you do. If it's comfortable for here, you are not comfortable. You start here. You start on the opposite side, and I start on the other side. So because I'm right hand, all right. So now I'm going to pick out more paint, and I'm going to sideload the white. See how I go right next to it and sideload and pick up white. See that? And it's more paint than you ever imagine usually. Okay, now I'm going to come here. Next thing I want you to see, look, is I want to get the shape of the base. I'll pick up yellow ochre so you can see. Down here, I'm going to keep this tulip face inside that, inside there, okay? I'm trying to not get the glare. Let's see. All right, now, now I'm going to come up here up here slide get that little bit of leaning in so it looks like the petals leaning inward okay i'm going to pick up some more white and on the opposite side and then i stand up all right so I'm laying down and then I come up and then watch what happens from here. I stand up, I push down, push down and lift. Okay, part of the problem is I'm using black. Okay, All right now I might, instead of just leaving it like this, I'm gonna come get some color little bit of white. I'm going to come right here. All right. And you can just come in here and add this backward petal that's right there. And it makes a pretty tulip. So let's get some more paint. And I'm going to do a tulip over here. Now this time, look, let's do the base. And then we're going to slide up here, and this is going to be a little bit more like a bud. See, I came up and back down. So up and come across. Well, thank you. I think it's bright on black. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Now, I've got to turn this around. Sometimes, guys, it really helps to turn it upside down. So I'm going to go on that outside edge. And usually I wiggle my tulips and do parrot tulips. But this is just going to be a standard tulip. And see how it, those three petals make it look like you're really shading and knowing what you're doing? Okay. There, that looks like it's a better... Better. So black backgrounds give you all kinds of wonderful stuff. We have a Karen from New Mexico. I used to have friends in New Mexico. Her and her husband. Okay. So I'm getting more paint. And I'm going to do a third tulip. And I'm just going to put it in here somewhere. So remember, I keep forgetting we want a base. That's just to help you see, I'm going to stay all my strokes into that rounded area. All right. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to do the very back petal. Pick up more paint, more white and yellow. 
<laughs> okay, just making sure you're not my, you aren't my friend. Yes, you're our friend. You're new. You're our friend. Um, I always make it so easy, but I try to do this for you guys. All right, so you can come up this side. And I'm going to make a little bit of a ruffle. Bring the brush up on the chisel and twist it. So every time you twist it, it makes a petal look like you really worked hard to get that. So I'm going to turn it upside down. Remember, if I'm doing the other side, I can do it upside down. Come to a point. I need more white. So I can slide back up here. And push hard, stand up, and twist the brush. Okay, so that one's starting to open up a little bit more. All right, so I can come in here and shade it a little bit more into here. Look how that makes that petal look like it turns. Isn't that fun? All right, so I'm going to bring this gold back down. All right, so now what if... I have a petal that looks like it's falling. All right. And we'll just have a little one that's coming there. Okay. So I hope you guys are having fun. That's a simple tulip lesson and it's, it is simple, just like I said. All right, now I need to go back to my green. So I'm having the dark green, sap green, and citrus green. And I'm going to work it till the citrus goes in to the sap and makes it lighter. It's a medium green then. All right. So I almost screwed up here because I almost can't get my stem from behind this petal here. So I'm pulling the chisel strokes down. And I like to run my little finger to pull me down. And tulips have a bigger stalk. That one's pretty big, though. So I could disguise it a little bit by adding some dark green on one side. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this guy. Okay, for that tulip. Oh, let me show you. And I'm going to come right up in here and pull down. Okay, so, so far we have all of these. There we go. All of that greenery. And I got really huge on this, but guess what? I'm going to take care of that so it won't be there. I promise you. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that three quarter inch brush and this one too, because we're down with those two. And what I have, I'm going to put my medium over here. Are you having fun yet? Oh, I'm happy to be here. I hope you're happy to be here. It makes me happy, happy, happy when everybody's got thumbs up and hearts. That's a good thing. I don't know that y'all have hearts <laughs> on here. I just know that it's fun to be on here. And I've got old friends and new friends and one stroke painting, and um, Michelle did hearts, there are hearts, okay, so you guys bless me by being on and watching me, and especially when I've had a hard day, and through meetings that are not fun, stop making you sick, right, okay, so now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to pick up with the, I dampen this 12 flat, and this is one, the lavender ones are my signature brushes, the dark green handle brushes, are my, there's some of these fantasy brushes of mine that are on HSN on the shopping network that are still available. You guys can go grab them. But the green handle brushes are my everyday brushes. So if you're new, um, Donna Weaver, hello girl and Robin. I'm glad you're watching me, <laughs> Robin. Thank you. Okay, so Robin was encouraging me today because I was frustrated that we had to glitch. So I thought this was my relax and paint. So I'm going to come paint it with you guys again. <laughs> uh, she's happy to get this lesson back. I'm happy that you are getting it too. All right. So I'm picking up these two colors and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. See, we're going to sideload a little bit of white. All right. Just because 
I want different greens. So I don't know if you notice, but sometimes people have the same greens for the whole painting. But if you're growing, growing, growing fern and tulips and all outdoors, you would naturally have different kinds of greens that pop up. Sometimes it's new growth and sometimes it's uh, older growth and it's darker. But also if this is in a flower arrangement, you're gonna have all these different colors. So one thing I like to do is let's come here. Now I usually start at the bottom, but I started here so I can place it where I want it. See that? And I see how dry that is. I needed to go into my medium. If you've got my double loader, that medium's not gonna be running everywhere. It's just running everywhere because I'm holding it in a plate. Okay, so like my little finger, I hold this steady and pull with my little finger. And then I'm going to put another one here to cover up those stems I'm not happy with. And maybe another one here. All right. So you're holding it steady. And not my little finger is touching and pulling. All right. So the reason I kept getting white, I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to keep picking up white. Where am I? There we are. A little bit of white. Okay, is then I'm going to start here and I'm going to do these little pieces of fern. Okay, so the sprigs come way out here. I have to keep getting a little bit of white. And that gives a nice fill and lightens it. So the big leaves, the blade uh, leaves for the tulips are hardy they're heavier and then these are a little fern and when you put them in a painting they lighten it so it's not so so hard looking gives it a lighter so see what happens when i have a lighter green in here with all that darker green i think it gives a really nice look all right so don't you think if you saw a flower arrangement, that would be there? Okay, I don't know if anybody else is there. Okay, I'm just checking you guys out, finding out if you're happy with what we're doing. I get mesmerized and I forget like what colors I'm using. Now what paint? Okay, I think we're frozen. <laughs> Michelle's the last one talking. Okay, so, or maybe you're watching. Are you watching? It'll make me happy if you're watching. But if you're frozen, that's not a good thing. Huh. Okay, so now we need three. We need a triangle of design. All right, so I can put another one down here. See, these are short little strokes on the chisel of the brush, the number 12 chisel. All right, so see, you don't want one, two, three, but if I have one and then one, two, it makes it really nice, okay? All right. Okay. So are y'all happy? Maybe that's enough. Y'all want more? That's going to make you tell me. Do you want more? <laughs> Let me know. All right. So I will talk to you for a few minutes, one stroke painting, because I'm going to wait for y'all to say something. So I know that you're out there because this, oh, this, huh. Christina Scott is always fun to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Julia. I know you can do it too. Okay, Miss Michelle, James, it's froze on you. Say something else. All right, so let's go and pick up our next flower. Okay, we are going to pick up white and some red. This is apple red. Oh, no, that's not what I want. Because guess what white and red makes? Pink. I'm going to pick up the daffodil yellow 
and red. There we go. This is going to be pretty. Okay, so look what happens. I'm going to come in here. There's a couple little flowers you can do with the same strokes I just showed you. You can come on this stem and you can go one, the same stroke as those, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, and you're walking it across, okay? So one, two, three, four, and I start over here and pull them as I go across, and they're all at a different height and level, and it gives you this fun little look. Okay. Okay, so that's yellow and red, apple red and daffodil yellow, and I'm leading with the apple red. Okay, so then what happens as we come in here? Let's get some more yellow. Now, look at this. We can do this too. We can tap it. So if I tap the chisel and I go from left, left to right or right to left. If you're lefty, you do one or the other. And I'm going to tap across. I need to keep getting yellow, though. And as I get bigger and bigger, it's like I'm making a Christmas tree. You see that? Now, it looks like a different flower, but it's the same colors. And I'm tapping instead of stroking. All right, so let's go close. See, this one's tapping right there. That one's tapping. And this one's pulling. Pull. Pull. Okay. And it gets a little blurry when I go close. So let me go up here a little bit. All right. So now I'm going to get the smaller brush even. A six. All right. A six flat. And let's see, there's a couple different things you can do. I'll show you. I can put a white daisy. So I'm going to touch, push, pull. And this has a wild hair on it. Wait a minute. Any of you get wild hairs where it won't, they won't stroke like you want it to stroke. This one has had a couple of them here. So let's do it again. All right. So I'd like to show you this that I'm going to. Look, I'm going to pick up white on both sides and flatten the brush. All right. So then what we're going to do is we push and pull and we're going to make a clock. This is a six flat. I'm going to push, lift, push, lift. All right. And then I'm going to put a couple of strokes in between to get this daisy. Now, the key with a daisy is your big lift, big lift. So you put pressure and lift, pressure and lift. And it makes the petals heavier on the outside and skinnier in the middle. And then I can just take the handle of my brush and I can dot the middle. Okay. So that's a real simple, fun little project that you can do right away is just learn daisies and paint daisies. So everything in here is not too hard. The... Tulips take a little bit of time, but look, so I'm going to take and I'm going to push and stand up, push and stand up. And I know we're covering some leaves, but you know what? I still want them underneath just in case some of them peep out. All right, so see my clock, 12, 3, 6, and 9. All right, then I can come in between here and put two, two. Now, I can do these two, but I'm going to show you how to do a tilted daisy. I don't want to totally rig that stock flower. All right. So I'll show you different centers, too. So we have a triangle of design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come uh, one, two, three down here. Now, I, I could do real skinny daisies. Or see, when I do this one, I can just put one in between each and not do two in between. All right, I'm gonna show you a different center to do to those. All right, I can also come in here, another yellow and red flower, and do little strokes, pushing smaller with the six. Here we go. 
All right. So I hope this is a good Thursday evening, little quick. I call these my quarantine, <laughs> my quarantine lessons. They come, I surprise people. I don't give you warning. I just come on and we, one, two, three, we need a triangle. So we can come up here and I just show you some little fun designs, but I want, I want you to see, let me get another brush. All right, let's get, this is an eight. And I want to show you one, two, three, four. So that's the side view of a daisy. It's more like a bud. And if you come right in between here and stroke again, I don't know if you can see, but if you're close, you could see a back row and a front row, which is really fun. All right, so I can put another daisy in here. Now watch this one. All the back petals are the same. And then these here start getting smaller and smaller. So it means that the daisy's tilted. You see it tilted back a little bit. And I can do a curve. Look at these different types of daisies. So you see how that one's opening up a little bit? All right, and I think we might be done. Okay, I'll put a little right here. Okay, now the key is if you put a pretty center, no matter if your petals are gorgeous or not, you're going to see how good it looks, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I can put the stems if it needs a stem. So sometimes if it's on top of other green, I do all dark green. And sometimes you don't put a stem because right here I need a stem. But the rest of them, um, the stem could be behind. Like back here, you don't know if you can see the stem. But here we'll put a stem. See that one right there? And this one, we can put a stem right in there. All right. So I'm going to put the daffodil yellow and dip dot these little guys right here, those three. But now let me show you how fun it is with a small little scruffy. This is a scruffy brush I made, all right? So I take and I fluff it, and it's like you're fluffing a makeup brush, all right? So then I'm going to take some yellow ochre on the dry brush. All the others have been dampened before I start, lay them on the paper towel. This one is scruffied, and I'm going to put the dark at the bottom and turn it around slightly. And here, tap, 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 and here, tap. I had turned the brush sideways to get that. And then I can redo this one because I'd like this one to be a fluffy one. All right, so right now that's okay, but look what happens if I come back and I tap a little bit of white. All right, thank you guys for being on tonight. I hope you enjoyed the little lesson. I'll show you a little butterfly real quick before we go. With the same colors. So there we are. All right, now I think I did put ribbon before. And my lost <laughs> lesson that I had on here. So one thing I can do is I can pick up white. And this is Brokart Multi-Surface. And I'm working in the floating medium. So I'm making it inky. All right. So look what happens. I can chisel flat, chisel back. All right. So I can tie this together a little bit. All right, and then I can have another ribbon. So push and stand up, and I'm making that ribbon kind of see-through. And I'm going over it again because it picked up yellow, so it'll give you a little bit of yellow. I can go get more of that, and I can make a ribbon. So is that kind of fun? 
and I can tie it with a second tie down here. All right, so let's do a butterfly. Now there's a couple easy cut of double uh, butterflies. All right, so let me show you that I'm going to pick up yellow on the 12. I dry off the brush. I'm going to pick up white and yellow. Okay, now I have a little trick. We're going to say right here is the head. So I'm going to come from the head. Oops. From the head, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to push down and wiggle in and out. There's the back wing. I pick up some more. And now more white. And then I'm going to slide from that head. I'm going to come up here. And this is going to be the front wing. Okay. So you see the back wing and the front wing. Okay. And then I'm going to push and lift two daisy petals. And those are the bottom two wings. All right, so now what's going to happen is let me get my liner brush. Now I got to make the body. Now, if I did dark green, I usually do. You wouldn't see the body. So I'm going to make citrus green with, oops, 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 I touched the black. Citrus green with a two script liner. It's a two script liner. I'm going to side load a little bit of the sap green. Okay, we're almost done. I'm going to touch. Push down for the body and then stand up the tail. And then I'm going to come in here, touch and pull up for the antenna. Touch and pull up for the antenna. So can you see those? And that's a simple little butterfly. And I love doing those because they really finish a piece. And I can put a little yellow, a white dot and a white dot because lots of times they have little dots. And they also have where you can touch and pull. And it makes a, a little comma in there. And a little dot in each one of these little guys. Okay. That's if you want to. You don't have to do that. Okay. And one last thing. I'm going to wash this brush and show you. That you can come in with this white. Just little tips and tricks that you can add to it if you want. Um, I can also come in here and do a little bit of these willow branches. All right. And I'm going to post this so y'all can see that picture. Oops. I don't know when to stop, do I? All right. What I was trying to show you is that you can put this right here, this liner. I hold it with my little finger. And I can take and make wired ribbon, which means it's got a little thin line of white. There we go. And that gives you the wire and the ribbon. See, it just puts a heavier line on the outside edge. Sorry, I've got the shakes tonight. There we go. So please share with your friends if you like this. And the more posts I get on lives here, and the more often I'll do them because I'm going to see that y'all like them. Or I'll just keep doing my regular posts. But if you want me to be live, that's a good thing. I will be. Okay. So this has got to turn around or something. It's confusing. I got carried away. Okay. And you sign it and you're done. I'll see you next time. Every Wednesday I put on Relax and Paint. A little fun lesson. Come join me. All right. Thank you, guys. There we go. Just a quick little lesson. See you next time.